everybody, what's up? And welcome back to Some Real Talk. I'm your host, Maya Bennett. I'm so excited. We have an amazing interview for you guys today with the members of One Accord. Three incredibly talented young guys who got four yeses on America's Got Talent. They blew the judges away with their fantastic voices. But today we're getting to know more about who One Accord is as individuals. What are their group dynamics? What's the origin story? We're getting into it all on today's episode of Some Real Talk. But before we do, check them out. Please welcome to Some Real Talk, Julian Kennedy, Christoph Hairston, and Tavis Cunningham, AKA the members of One Accord. Thank you guys so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having us. I'm going to ask you, Tavis, how would you say you guys' lives have changed since you appeared on America's Got Talent? Well, our lives have changed um, drastically um, just by our, our being known in public. Um, we go out, especially in the Greensboro area, my local town of Rayford, North Carolina, and people are like, you're from um, America's Got Talent. Like the other day I went to Jersey Mike and there were like people that they were like, oh my God, it's from America's Got Talent. And they turned the camera around and took a picture of me with them making their sub, making my sub, which I thought was pretty cool. And also um, we're just, we're just going international as well as um, United States and people are um, saying, saying how we make them feel and saying that they can feel our love and they, they're crying and shedding tears and they're just so happy that we are doing what we're doing as musicians today. So I actually wanna know a little bit about the backstory. Christoph, would you mind telling me who came up with the name One Accord and is there a special significance behind it? So it's a funny story. Um, Julian, Tavis, and I, among all the other things that we have in common, one thing that we do have in common is uh, we all like to eat. And so my mom one day was like, hey, like, let's go out to, um, to lunch because I don't know if she had met them in person before that point. Um, and so we went out to lunch and we were all eating our food. And my mom, uh, she's a pastor's wife. And so being a pastor's wife, she's talking to us, trying to make church people casual conversation, I guess. And she asks us, what's well, our favorite scriptures? I say mine, Tavis says his, I mean, Julian says his. And then when we get to Tavis, Tavis is like, well, you know, I pretty much like anything that talks about people coming together, being in unity and being on one accord. And my mom looks at us and she says, that's it, one accord. And so it's all kind of because Tavis, you know, he has a love for people um, being unified and being together. Together. And so when she heard him say that, it gave her the idea and we loved it. Yeah. So you told us a little bit about how you met on America's Got Talent in the school cafeteria. Walk me through that moment, the moment One Accord was born. We were all sitting in the cafeteria and then Christoph's mutual friends had to leave because they went to class. So while we were in the cafeteria, we were talking about the many artists that we loved. Um, of course, the Clark Sisters. I was wearing a hoodie of the Clark Sisters as well. Um, Whitney Houston, Anita Baker, L Luther Vandross, and so on and so forth. And then when we went back to the Clark Sisters, we named like each songs that we love them together and separately. And we we stopped on this certain one, naming and claiming. I was like, and then we were like, oh, let's sing that. And then we sung it and we are from the South. Let me tell you that. <laughs> the lunch ladies, the lunch ladies in the back were saying, shame, baby. Then <laughs> next thing you know, when once we posted it separately, boom, it went viral. So in a news interview that you guys did with WXXI 12 News, you said that a producer from America's Got Talent actually reached out to you, asked you to audition, you got flown out to audition, and then look at us now, do you think if that sign hadn't come your way, a producer asking you to audition, that this would have been something you'd pursued now? Honestly, I would say I'm between the answers of maybe and no. I'm saying maybe because we don't know what could have happened, but no is because we were just playing around and we were just like, you know, mm -hmm. this is something fun to do. Like we sound good together. Like, hey, let's just post it and see what happens. And then when it went viral, people are like, when are you guys going to be a group? When are you guys going to be a group? We were like, we don't mm -hmm. know. We like, are just kind of playing. And then when we got that message from Courtney Harrell, we were like, oh, it's getting a little serious now. <laughs> that message kind of solidified us as a group. 
we didn't choose to audition for AGT. It was like the opportunity came to us. And you know, it's so interesting because one of the things that I said during our original audition was that we came together by happenstance, but I really do have to truly say everything really has shown itself to be more of destiny <laughs> um, because, you know, just the fact that we all chose to go to the same school, we're around the same age bracket, happened to be in the cafeteria at the same time on the same day, have similar friends, have similar backgrounds, pick this song, posted the day we did, it goes viral. Courtney reaches out to us. I mean, it just, it just, it came together all too well. You know, it, it was above us. So yeah, it's our destiny, I think, to be together and to reach people. And that seems like what we're doing. So that's really beautiful, really special. I love that story. I think it's a testament to how individually you all were so strong and so passionate about music, but literally all the pieces fell into place. The opportunity presented itself and now you're together as one accord. So I wanna ask, every group has its strengths and every person brings their own set of strengths to the group dynamic. So to each of you, what do you think is the biggest strength you bring to one accord? Ooh. Hey, Tavis is the fashionista, beautician, pop culture expert. He's all of that, he's all of that. I don't want us around here looking like anything, looking thrown together. So. <laughs> okay, um, being an expert in music theory and your training, yeah. um, Christoph always asks me like, what notice this, what notice that? I believe Tavis does this as well. Um, I give them the note. So I'm pretty much the perfect pitch person of the group. Um, <laughs> Um, I was just going to say, Julian is the pitch pipe. Like, he has perfect pitch, so we don't have to be by a piano or anything. Somebody can be like, Julian, what's G? And he can sing it. I mean, he just knows. You can even say to him the octave, and he has that perfectly. He's quite amazing. And of course, obviously, Julian is our pianist, and he plays by ear, so you don't have to give him any sheet music. You don't have to give him anything. If he hears it, or he hears what you're trying to do, he can play it and play it excellently. So he's amazing in that regard. I don't know, guys, what I would say I contribute to the group. Um, <laughs> one of the things that- The um, chaplain. Uh, yes, I'm the chaplain, you know, I'm the, I don't know, person who gives us our come to Jesus meetings, I guess. Each of us has, you know, all of our own different set of influences. I mean, Julian is really the jazz, 1870s gospel and Aretha Franklin, you know, and Tavis is like, you know, the musical theater Broadway world. I mean, he has that down pat. He's the resident professor on that. And then I am, I don't know, probably the churchiest person you'll ever meet. So when you bring those three musical backgrounds together, um, it really just opens up a door for a lot of cool things to happen. I want to know about the first time you each realized you had this amazing talent of being able to sing. The talent of singing, um, I would say I've, I've been singing all of my life, but I really started digging into my gift and talent of singing when I got into middle school. Grew up um, church boy. My father's also a pastor and uh, we're in the Baptist ring. So my mother's a deaconess and my mother was choir director. She sang, so she was singing and you had to do something in the church. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be on the choir. But it's like my mom was my vocal coach and me and her used to sing around the house and sing while she's cooking, sing while she's doing laundry, sing while she's laying down, just sing all the time. And then I picked up a lot of things from her. So and then I get into middle school and I sing um, at this talent show. It's called Tiger Bill's Got Talent. I went to West Oak Middle School. And the group that I was in, we called ourselves the B-Flats because it was two trumpets and then I was singing. Um, we won first place in that competition. I was like, wow. Um, we sang the song Hallelujah. And I was like, wow, this is, maybe I can, maybe I got a little something. And then we got into high school and I got into musical theater. And then I started singing and I'm like, wow, this is something that really makes me happy. And what really showed me that it was a gift is that people were telling me the way that they, that I made them feel when I would sing, how they got chills or how they would start to cry or how they would just start to feel good. If they were having a bad day, that they would just feel better and forget about it. So that's when I knew that um, I had a gift of singing. Um, singing and music has always been my niche. Um, I started music wise, I started when I was two years old. And the very first words that I was singing was a James Brown classic, say it loud and black and proud. 
And then my mom was like, how is he saying all these lines um, all together without even messing up? And one thing that she meant, one thing that I didn't know at that time was me having autism, me, me being in the Asperger syndrome as well. Um, I never knew that singing would be my way out of having autism and showing people that I am different. Um, also, I started singing in the youth choir as well. Uh, it wasn't a force. <laughs> Nobody forced me. I, it felt like I wanted to do it because that's something that I've loved. Gospel music back in the day also kept me grounded. And once I was seven years old, I discovered something else. Me playing the piano by ear. And the first song I believe I've played was I'm Not the Same by Walter Hawkins. And then in middle school, I started to sight read music. And then once I went to college, everything just changed all of a sudden. So I'm glad that I'm still in the music niche, musical niche. I started out, of course, being that my father is a pastor, all of us were asked to sing in the children's choir um, as kids. And so um, I was just asked one random Sunday, the director was like, you're singing the solo this week. And I was like, oh my gosh, terrified. Um, and so I just remember I got up there, it was the Sunday morning and I was terrified. Um, and so instead of looking at the congregation, I closed my eyes. And if I opened them, there was this big clock in the back of the church. And I was like, I'm just going to forget about everybody sitting in front of me. And I'm just going to pretend God's sitting back there in a big chair and I'm just going to sing straight to him. And um, so I would just go back and forth between looking at the clock and the closing my eyes. And then after I finished, um, I, you know, opened my eyes and I saw that everybody in the congregation was standing up and I was like, you know what, maybe I sounded a little bit good. All right. So we've reached the end of our time together, but there's one question I always like to end interviews with, which is one accord. What message do you want to leave your supporters with? For supporters, just be yourself, do what you love, love what you do. And if you can't go a day without thinking about it, then it's something that you need to be doing. As far as like um, music, um, Broadway Musical Theater, I want to be a veterinarian when I was first entering college. And then I was like, you know what? I think about being on Broadway and being on a big stage every day more than I think about sewing up an animal. So, <laughs> so like, you know, it's just, I think about performing and that's what I decided to do. And performing has, brought me so much joy. So I would say that do what you love, love what you do, be yourself 100%. And when you do those things that you love, the doors will be, the doors will be ripped off the hinges for you. Also, I don't think no other artist has mentioned this. Um, you could be so rich and famous all of your life, but what really comes down is respecting your parents that's, that's um, a major key in life as well. Your parents has taught you so much, so much lessons that you need to learn and don't take them for granted. Don't take advantage of your parents as well. Um, your mother has been taking care of you all these years of your living. Um, yes, always give honor to your parents as the scripture has said. Know that you are good enough and then mm. I say it like this, you don't perform for people, you perform to people, as you say, mm -hmm. that you don't need their validation if you're good enough, because if they don't think you're good enough, you are still good enough because that gift resides within you. For me, I think the biggest thing that um, comes from our uh, experience that people can gather is to try to get ready more than you are trying to get attention. Um, one thing that I see so much right now is, you know, people are so quick to post every single thing they do, every single song they sing, but they haven't necessarily actually mastered their art of singing or found themselves as an artist in their own way of expressing. So I would say like, get ready for people to see you and when they do, what are they seeing? What makes you different? What sets you apart? Instead of just trying to get noticed because the thing about like today's world is, you know, all of us, even 
us included. You know, we can be up today and, you know, maybe not the next big thing tomorrow. So focus on who you are. Focus on setting yourself apart. Focus on investing yourself so that when you do get the attention that you're ready and that you're set apart to do something different and that you're just not, you know, uh, something that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. Don't rush for the opportunity, as what he mentioned. Let the opportunity come to you because it's going to come. You're just gonna have to have the patience. So keep working. You can do it. Just don't rush. That touched me and I know you guys' voices will touch a lot of people on stage. So you can follow them online individually or check out their group Instagram at official one accord and be sure to check them out on America's Got Talent. Ladies and gentlemen, the members of One Accord, thank you so much for being here today. And that's a wrap for today's show. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Julian Tavis and Kristoff for being this week's special guests on Some Real Talk. If you enjoyed this interview, I hope you consider clicking that like button down below and let me know what you thought about these guys down in the comments section. Thank you for making it this far in this video and I know these guys are gonna make it far on America's Got Talent. Until next time, keep it real.